Venezuela has a high crime rate, with serious crimes like murder and kidnapping rising with each passing year. Watch the video till the end, as we tell the history of Mafia in Venezuela. The Beginning The Mafia in Venezuela date back to the 20th century, when violent crime in Venezuela was just confined to the countryside. These crimes experienced a major increase in the 1950s as a result of the population's growing urbanization. Following the restoration of democracy in the 1960s, tensions increased as leftist guerrillas from the FALN engaged in violent fights with the government. However, these clashes reduced as a result of the lack of public support for the guerrilla movement. The country of Venezuela was also a goal for Italian organized criminal organizations. Consequently, the Italian government made the decision to establish one of its 20 offices throughout the world in Caracas, specifically to look into drug trafficking. Italian criminals participated in the Venezuelan economy in a number of areas, including banking, construction, tourism, and the services sector, to make sure they are controlling all the departments. Moreover, with an airport that could accommodate more than 5,000 aircraft and extensive land and waterways for communication, Venezuela had excellent connections to the outside world in the second half of the 20th century. The Base for All Crimes In those years, the senior leader of the American Cosa Nostra, Carlo Luciana, also visited Venezuela twice in the years after he was expelled from the United States in 1947, providing the first indication of its significance to organized crime. The reason behind Luciana's interest was the fact that Venezuela was now one of the world's top oil producers. Luciana wanted to expand the Mafia's operations to take advantage of its flourishing economy. The level of corruption increased massively as compared to global standards, with Juan Pablo Alfonso famously saying that oil is the devil's excrement. In the 1970s, international organized criminal organizations exploited Venezuela into one of the main conduits for trafficking cocaine made in the Andean region. Venezuela not only supplied the materials required to make cocaine, but it also provided a platform for the laundering of the illegal proceeds from drug production and trafficking. Although those who oversaw transnational organized crime networks in Venezuela typically enjoyed a considerable level of impunity, as authorities occasionally conducted an operation that highlighted the significance of Venezuela as a hub for illicit activity. The Rising Crime Rate Between the 1960s until the late 1980s, there were 8 to 10 killings per 100,000 people. During the institutional crisis in the country, homicides rose massively in Venezuela that surrounded the country's administration. These major socioeconomic problems were evident during the Caracazo protests in 1989 and Hugo Chavez's coup attempts in 1992. Consequently, the idea of breaking social norms and using violence to achieve aims to the Venezuelan populace, such as massive looting during the Caracazo or by attempting to stage an undemocratic coup like in 1992. So by 1993, Venezuela had a murder rate of 21 per 100,000 people by 1993. Rafael Caldera, who took office as president of Venezuela in 1994, tried to strengthen the country's institutions by staying at the center of political debates and implementing conservative and reformist measures that stopped the rise in the murder rate, though his popularity and the public's confidence in the political system declined. The Bolivarian Revolution Venezuela's institutions declined under Hugo Chavez, and there was a rise in political unrest, lawlessness, and aggressive government rhetoric. A period of transformation and political conflict began with the change in political regime in 1999 and the beginning of the Bolivarian Revolution. This period was marked by a further rise in the number and rate of violent deaths, which revealed that the murder rate had increased in just four years, from 25 per 100,000 in 1999 to 44 per 100,000 in 2003. 95% of the homicide victims in Venezuela were men, and 69% of them were aged between 15 and 34. 92% of killings in the Venezuelan capital city of Caracas involved the use of weapons. At that time, the Bolivarian Revolution also sought to overthrow the current quo of society, which was becoming increasingly unstable. The Bolivarian administration maintained that poverty and inequality were to blame for crime and violence. Yet while boasting about eradicating both, Venezuela's murder rate remained on the rise. Venezuela was also a major route for drug trafficking as the country came in fourth place overall. Authorities in Colombia claimed in 2007 
that they had discovered documents purporting to prove that Hugo Chavez promised payments to the FARC of up to 300 million US dollars. Drugs and kidnappings. Other than drugs, men, women, and children were subjected to forced labor and sex trafficking to and from Venezuela. Although the Venezuelan authorities educated government officials about trafficking, they did not publicly document progress on prosecutions and convictions of trafficking offenders. This resulted in the U.S. State Department designating Venezuela as a Tier 3 country on its blacklist. After that, the kidnapping started, with at least 80% of kidnappings taking place in a small region near Caracas. Things got so bad that businesses and families spared money and set it aside in case they needed to pay ransoms for kidnappings. Rich Venezuelans spent their money on bodyguards and armored cars, whereas middle-class Venezuelans constantly changed their routes to work and tried to avoid flashing their jewels in public and never went alone. Venezuelans didn't even trust their local police, and as a result, kidnappings frequently went unreported, making it difficult for the government to stop them. The police force in Venezuela was rife with extensive corruption, as most police officers were involved in illegal activities. They were responsible for one out of every five crimes and killed thousands of people while operating with complete impunity. The Fake Hope Then came the Hugo Chavez era, who was able to successfully solidify his legitimacy and brought enormous political changes during his time in office from 1999 to 2013. This resulted in dramatic surge in popularity of Chavismo, which propagated the cult of Chavez as the liberator of the Venezuelan people. Chavez led with charisma by projecting himself as a man of the people rather than a member of the elite. To rule and uphold his legitimacy, he employed transformation and transaction strategies. He was also a skilled orator who appealed to the general public through his weekly TV program. Chavez started the group called Colectivos, who were given guns, communication systems, motorbikes, and surveillance equipment by Chavez years earlier to act as the armed wing of the Bolivarian Revolution for the Venezuelan government in the Caracas Hills, where police were not allowed to enter. They got funds and weapons from the state when they were placed under the control of the government's community councils in 2006. In 2011, Chavez disbanded the Metropolitan Police, handing over security to colectivos in various Caracas barrios. The groups received grenades, submachine guns, and assault rifles, among other armaments. Colectivos were also equipped with AK-47s and other automatic rifles and tear gas. More than 20 programs were developed throughout Hugo Chavez's administration in an effort to reduce crimes. Furthermore, a new experimental security university as well as the Bolivarian National Police were established by the Hugo Chavez's Venezuelan government in 2009. Chavez's passing in 2013 made the condition of the country go even worse, with international peace organizations classifying Venezuela as the most unstable country in the world. Even with the Chavez government's ban on individual gun ownership, crime rates continued to rise. In some instances, crime became so ubiquitous in Venezuela that the military was instructed to stay away from open areas at night because thieves frequently tried to take their weapons. The Country in Ruins the country saw a sharp rise in crime rates because of the institutional instability, inadequate funding for police resources, and extreme inequality. By encouraging class warfare and social disintegration, government aimed to establish a cultural hegemony, which in turn emboldened criminal gangs to commit murder, kidnappings, robbery, and extortion. Power outages, a lack of food and medicine, escalating internal security issues, an increase in homicide rates, and widespread starvation were all happening throughout the nation. This resulted in more than 3 million people leaving the country, making it the greatest immigration in Venezuelan history. Furthermore, the colectivos also engaged in violence against the opposition protesters in Venezuela during the 2014 anti-Maduro demonstrations. More than half of those killed during the protests were killed by colectivos. Colectivos were now characterized as armed gangs that employ violence with impunity to intimidate political rivals of the Venezuelan government. They were termed as armed pro-government sympathizers who were tolerated or encouraged by the authorities. Colectivos killed at least 131 people between 2014 and 2017 while participating in anti-government demonstrations. During the country's crisis, 
rising violent crime, especially murder, was a massive worry for Venezuelan's top officials. Not only this, the occasional looting of trucks full of commodities became increasingly frequent in Venezuela, as the country's citizens were experiencing shortages of almost everything. The condition was so bad that thieves would not even wait for trucks to collapse and instead completely attacked and killed everyone before robbing the area. Venezuelans were stealing food from trucks and stores because of widespread shortages in their country. After a wave of widespread looting, many cities in Venezuela were reportedly under an effective curfew in June 2016. In 2017, it was discovered that even military members had become targets, with criminals starting to simply kill all of their victims before robbing them of their possessions, giving theft in the nation a more vicious aspect. In the last few years, Venezuela has had the highest rate of violent crime in the world. Even public hospital stairwells are not immune from criminals, who prey on workers and patients in spite of the numerous security personnel manning the hospitals. The police are accused of working together with the criminals and taking a part of the loot. The majority of the violence is committed by organized street gangs, and criminal activity is attributed to frequently dishonest and underfunded law enforcement, a dysfunctional and political judicial system, along with a bad prison system and easy access to firearms. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content of the video. If you did, show some love and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.